Hi everyone, it's Miss Lenorovitz, and I just wanted to give you a little bit more insight onto how to do the data analysis for your ideal gas lab report. Um, in the lab, as you know, or if you haven't done it yet, you're going to be taking a known volume of two different gases and exposing them to different temperature water baths. And as a result, the gas inside of the syringe that you're going to be using will take on the same temperature once it equilibrates to the temperature of the water bath. So you're going to be changing the temperature of the gas, which as you know is going to change its volume. So you're going to be recording temperature and volume data for each of those two gas samples. I'm going to show you in this video what you can do if you would like to do your graphing in Excel. The first thing you'll want to do in Excel is you're going to copy over your data. So here I've included the data from my experiment that I did. So temperature in Celsius and volume, in this case I used hydrogen gas. Um, the water bath labels are fine. You can certainly include those here, but they're not going to be part of your graph. What will be are your temperature and volume pieces of data. And it's helpful to have the heading in your column because once you do that, Excel will actually pull from your column heading when you're making labels for your graph. So your next step then is going to be to highlight the data that you want to have graphed. It's helpful to have the data that you want to be on your x-axis, your independent variable, to be on the left column, and the data that you want to be on your y-axis, your dependent variable, to be in the right column. Once you've highlighted that data, you're going to go to Insert, and then you're going to go to Charts. In Excel, you're going to want to choose a scatter plot, and that's because you have a continuous data set here. So here you can see that it's already started to craft that graph for me. Um, it's made some assumptions about labels in the uh, chart title. It's made some assumptions about the scale on my axes. But if we look very carefully at this, we're expecting on our y-axis that we have volume of the sample and on the x-axis that we have temperature. And we would expect that as temperature is decreasing, so is volume. So we have a little bit of work to fix up this graph so that it's more useful for us as a tool in this lab. What we ultimately want to predict is where our data would intersect with the x-axis. And you can see that right now that's going to be way off screen over here. So we're going to do some adjustments to our graph in order to make that possible. Many of these next steps you can do in any order, but I'm just going to talk you through how I would approach this. So when I'm ready to do some more formatting, I click on the graph and to the right hand side, then I'm going to see some menu options. I'm going to click on the plus sign to get to chart elements. And one of the things that's not yet checked is axis titles. So you notice once I click that, I then have the opportunity to put in a Y axis title and an X axis title. You want to do that, so it should include your variable and your units. If you do yourself the favor of making very good Y and X axis labels, that will make putting in a title for your graph that much easier. A good general format is to take your Y axis label, to put in the uh, abbreviation for verses, and then to put in your X axis label. Um, you can always resize that font so that you have a uniform and consistent font size for your title. Um, notice here that I've also labeled the gas that I'm using. This is going to be helpful for you to do in your chart title as well. So remember, we're interested where our data set, if we extrapolated it, would intersect with the x-axis. So right now, we can see that that's going to be very far into the negative temperatures here. And in fact, if you think about it, where the volume of the sample is zero should be at approximately the absolute um, zero, so at negative 273 degrees Celsius. We're going to try to see if our experimental data lines up with that theoretical value. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to change the scale on our horizontal axis so that we can see where it's going to be all the way out to negative 273. So to do that, you're going to click on your x-axis. And when you click on that x-axis, it should bring up your axis options on the Format Axis tab. If you look right now, it's set to have a minimum of minus 20. We're going to go ahead and change that, and I would recommend that you change it to minus 300. Um, your intersection with the x-axis may not be exactly at 273, so you want to give a little bit of fudge room there. So once you've done that, you hit Enter, and notice now immediately our graph looks a lot different. 
you can now more clearly start to visualize where our data is going to intersect with that x-axis. And just visually, it looks like it's going to hit that x-axis, zero milliliters, at negative 300 to negative 250 degrees Celsius, which is right where we would hope and what we would expect for absolute zero. So once you've done that, the next thing that you can do is actually do a little bit of trickery with this data set and get Excel to do some work for you. Another quick setting that you can change while you're in working on your access, if you go down a little bit farther, is you'll see an option for tick marks. I've just selected to put cross lines for the major and the minor tick marks. That allows me to see just a little bit more detail on this x-axis. All right, if you were graphing by hand right now, what you would do is you would take a ruler and you would line it up with your data points and you would extrapolate by drawing a line right through your data points to show what's happening with this trend and what you think would happen as you continue to decrease the temperature of that sample. If you're graphing in Excel, you can actually have Excel do that work for you. So you're gonna click on your graph again, click on the plus, and then click on the option for trend line. Because you're gonna to wanna to do a couple of things there, you're then gonna to click to the right and I would encourage you to click on more options. When you do that, you're gonna have some trend line options that show up on the right-hand side. We're expecting a linear trend, so you're gonna select linear there. The other things that you want to probably include are to display the equation on the chart and to display the R squared value. Um, it's gonna plot these just about anywhere in your graph and you can move that text box so it's more easy to read. The trend line, um, if you look at the equation now, is y equals 0.016x plus 4.6018. Remember from your math classes that y equals mx plus b is the equation for a line. You can then use this equation by setting y to 0 to solve for x to get the actual temperature at which your line would cross. The r squared value is a statistical measure the closer that R squared value is to one, the stronger the trend of your line. In this case, notice that we've got a good strong um, R squared value of 0.9792. So very, very close to one. That means we have a really good consistent relationship here. So your last steps, if you're graphing in Excel, is to go ahead and do that calculation using your equation. Um, again, you're gonna be solving for X when Y is equal to zero. So I've done that here, and with the data that I have for this particular trial, I calculated the absolute zero at minus 287.9 degrees Celsius, which is great. Remember, we're hoping the theoretical absolute zero is minus 273 degrees Celsius. If you printed this graph out, you could draw that line and you could actually find that physical intersection point. Um, once you've done that calculation, you're gonna copy your graph, you're gonna copy your calculated value, and you're gonna paste that into your lab report. You'll do the same thing for your second graph as well. So you'll use a different guess and do the same thing to calculate absolute zero. Hope that helps.